In this video, I'm going to talk about some of the implications for muscle function when you are stuck in the left AIC pattern. And I just love anatomy, so I just think it's fascinating. It's not something you definitely have to know. It's good to know it, uh, but with postural restoration, the exercises are designed to just kind of take care of these issues without you really even knowing. But I'll just go over it anyway. So in the left AIC pattern, you have a left side of the pelvis, which is over here, rotating forward and orienting the entire pelvis to the right. All right, that equates with being in right stance. So if you're on your right foot when you're walking and your left leg is swinging through the air, that's the position your pelvis is in. However, that is not the position your pelvis should be in when you put your weight on your left leg. It should switch. If it doesn't switch, you are in the left AIC pattern. You're basically stuck on your right foot 24-7. So when that happens, predictably, muscle function will change, both on the left side and the right side. But I'm only going to talk about the left side right now. So on the left side, if the pelvis is rotated forward, and this is well known as anterior pelvic tilt. This has been written about forever. I knew about it before I even discovered postural restoration. So these things are not unique necessarily to, to PRI, these observations. Although, but the reasoning for it is. Now, when the pelvis is stuck forward on the left side, you'll often find an overactive left psoas, an overactive left rectus femoris, and overactive left TFL. These are all hip flexors. And the reason they're overactive is because they're positioned in a state that they cannot turn off. If a pelvis is patterned, it's stuck in a position with the left side is forward. Because you have the leg, here's my leg, under, I don't have a skeleton leg, but this is what I'll have to do. This pelvis has rotated forward compared to the leg. Now that puts the, these hip flexors in a position that they can't turn off mechanically. And what they start doing is they start to take over as rotators also. They do have, so they have hip flexion, but they also have rotation responsibilities. But they shouldn't be the only rotators. And unfortunately, when you're in this position, the adductor, your inner thigh muscles, which are supposed to bring your leg in and help rotate your leg internally, which is what should happen when your weight is on that foot, they weaken because of the, again, because of the position of the pelvis. You'll see the leg will, because of this position, the leg adducts away from the pelvis and hence the adductors get weak. Now, of course, on the back side, you have the left hamstrings and the left glutes that get, because, the fo because this side is forward, those muscles get stretched out and they weaken as well. So you don't have a lot of stability for the left side of the pelvis coming from the hamstring and the adductors, which really should be giving that stability. Instead, most of your stability is coming from your hip flexors, which then can affect your knee and just cause all sorts of different issues. What you might also find is a tight posterior hip capsule. And that occurs because if the pelvis is oriented to the right, the left leg then has to turn out to stay straight. And that tightens the back of the hip capsule because the left leg is always turned out. And so it is the uh, left glute medius, the posterior rotating fibers of the left glute medius, and some ligaments in the back that will be in a permanently shortened position and hence will be tight. So sometimes that, tight, that posterior hip capsule needs to be stretched out as well. So this also has implications on the lower back because the pelvis, here's the sacrum, the spine comes up off the sacrum. So any type of movement of the pelvis will also rotate the spine. They're inseparable, nothing lives independently of anything else in the body. The main issue, well, two of the main issues is that 
real strong psoas muscle, and it's a really big muscle that attaches to the leg, but it also comes through the pelvis and attaches to the back of the, or to the spine, the lower spine, the lumbar spine. It will exert a pull on the spine forward on that left side. So it's gonna increase the arch in your lower back. So that can end up in tightened lower back muscles and back pain. The other thing that it can do is when this hip capsule, or when this hip joint, the left hip joint, this intersection between the left leg and the pelvis, when that joint gets weak, too weak, because it's not being stabilized by the hamstring, it's not being stabilized by the adductor, it's not being stabilized by the anterior glute medius, all its stabilization is occurring through those hip flexors. When that happens, it often causes instability in the SI joint on the left side. It can also happen on the right side, but on the left side, it's often a very weak SI joint, and a lot of left SI joint pain, lower back pain, comes from the fact that this left hip joint is weak because you've lost proper muscle function of the left adductor, the left hamstring, the left glute max, the left anterior glute medius, which I didn't really get into, and also the left obliques up on top. They get stretched out also and they weaken as well. And so this whole left side is weak and it just gets worse and worse and worse. Uh, so that is the summation of how an anterior pelvic tilt or the left AIC position pattern can affect muscle function in the left leg. A big part of the healing process is exercise, and in particular, training the movement patterns that you've lost. So if you like this video, could you please like it, share it, subscribe to the channel, do whatever you have to do to, to spread the word so other people can benefit just like I have.